All right, so how's it going, everybody? Today, I'm gonna to be showing, once again, another rod building video. And the last video, which actually a lot, I got a lot of views, I was really surprised. And a lot of good comments, a lot of people saying I'm an idiot, but of course, everyone on the internet, no matter what, knows more than you. So that's okay, don't ever worry about that. Don't ever let that bother you. But yes, today I'm gonna, it was a spinning fishing, like a spinning reel fishing rod was the last video. And in this video, I'm going to be making a, I guess, a conventional reel style rod, which there's not really a difference at all. It's just, it's the same thing. But I've had this reel about a year now, and I think I've used it a couple times in videos, and some people were asking me what it was. But we're going to be making the rod for this reel, if it ever focused. I Technos 12C, awesome reel. I've kind of a couple snook on it, but mainly I want this for like bottom fishing and stuff, which all, you might want to ask why building a rod for it, I already have one, but this rod is kind of, it's more like a boat rod, like live bait stuff, which is what I'm going to do with this reel, but I kind of wanted to make this more general use, because like snook fishing off the beach, jetty and stuff, the rod blank I got is a little bit longer, and that'll help with that, make casting a little bit easier, but also be able to use it on the boat and stuff, so. That's mainly what I wanted the reel to be, and I, I kind of wanted to make the rod kind of match the reel. I thought about just making the rod all black, which that always does look really good, especially since the reel's black. But once again, purple is my favorite color, and I think I'm gonna try and do some kind of design with the purple thread I have. And yeah, I figured I'd bring you along and show you how to build a rod with for a conventional reel. But yes, once again, I ordered all my parts from Mudhole, and if you're wondering how they ship it, this cool triangle box, and the other, other stuff I bought from them, it, uh, Shipped fine, no problems with that. So it's, it actually took like three days or something, three or four days, and it delivered, which was great because I have I have to build this rod this week, because next this weekend I'm going down to the Keys and for my like yearly marathon trip, and I really wanted to have this rod ready to go. But yeah, I believe the guy's name was Ben. I don't know if he's like a customer service or kind of thing or whatever was going on there, but that guy was awesome. I probably sent. 50 emails to him and we were talking back and forth and he was helping me pick out all the parts and stuff because I, I that the only stuff I don't really know is like the matching up the measurements for the diameters of the blank to get the real seats and grips and what guides and stuff like that but I got some good things here so let's open her up all right so this is kind of how they got it in there so of course they send magazine mud hole yeah, uh, one thing I, I will say, I love Mud Hole, but they need to chill out on the magazines. They send me these like every other week. I have a stack, so if anyone wants some uh, magazines. But yes, yeah, so here's one grip. Um, this will be the four grip, which I'll show stuff a lot better. Then we got, oh, so once I, I said uh, purple is my favorite color, and I saw this. I was like doing it. It kind of looks more pink. Kind of looks actually a lot out of focus. Yeah, that's a little bit better, but yeah, this actually looks a lot more pink than purple. But it's supposed to be purple, purple, but it's the real seat. And I thought that would look pretty cool on there. And then I'm gonna do some purple thread work stuff. And then the guides, um, the Fuji guides. Uh, I believe I got the, the silicone carbide or something for the tip. And I don't, I don't, I don't think the other guys are that. Oh, aluminum oxide guides, which I like that the carbide for the tip, because then uh, those guys are pretty damn strong. And my other couple rods that have them, I've never had to ever replace them in years. So um, that's that stuff. Guessing the rod boy would be correct. And this is the rod blank here. It's uh, I forget how tall it was. I think it was seven, about seven foot. Um, anyway, it, oh yeah, yeah, seven foot. It's 15 to 40 pound. And 
Uh, I'll, if you want, if you're, I will put a parts list thing in the description of the video. So everything I ordered, um, the numbers and stuff, that'll all be in the description. So just click that if you want to get the similar stuff. But uh, yeah, this is the. It's actually hard to show because it's a seven foot dam rod. But yeah, that's all the stuff, and I believe I, there is no butt cap for the rod. And I think I saw that shipped later or something, or it wasn't in stock, but it should st ship in a couple of days. Hopefully it does. If not, uh, I'm going to bring the rod anyway down to the Keys. And I'll have to put something on there because that might hurt a little bit having just a raw blank <laughs> going into your thigh. Which I guess would be the same as the rod holder, but so. Not the biggest deal, but that was one thing I could do without, I figured. Alright, so this would be the number of the blank. It's a SW70M, which I believe was the medium. Captain, do you really gotta scratch your feet on my bed right when I start recording, man? But it's an S SW70M from MHX. I figured I'd run through these things a little bit closer, so um, we got... I guess the butt grip, you would call it. This is what goes at the bottom of the rod. Then you got the foregrip, which goes above the reel. As you can see it's a little, it's like tapered kinda. So it looks nice on the blank. And then in between those, we have our reel seat, which is supposed to be purple. Actually looks a lot, a lot more pink, but I think uh, it'll grow on me, I like it. So that holds the reel on the blank. And then we got, can't really see them because they kind of got tape over them, but all the rod guides that we're going to be using. So, got a bunch of different sizes of them. They're all labeled. This is a tip. Should be a pretty nice tip if it ever focuses on there. It's the, the silicone carbide or whatever it's called. Yeah, silicone carbide. Now, I keep talking about epoxy and stuff, and of course, oh, it sounds like I broke my ankle right there, but uh, of course, Mudhole has their own epoxy stuff, and I just buy this, and it's been great so far. So, we got what's called paste epoxy, and you can see there's a part A and a part B, and basically you just mix equal parts of it, and it cures together. Also, I just went to like Publix and got a bunch of popsicle sticks, helps with mixing that stuff, but pretty easy. Um, probably want to test like if you're if it's your first time doing it, you probably want to. Mix just a little bit together and just see, because if you don't mix it right, it won't uh, harden. Like you put a little bit more, too much of that one or that one, and um, it just won't harden right. And there's also liquid epoxy, which is what you're going to use for the guides and the wrappings and stuff like that. But the paste epoxy is nice because it just sticks right. Because if you put, if you, I mean, I guess you could probably use liquid epoxy for the grips and the reel seat but it's gonna get all really messy and go everywhere and slide down the blank and this stuff just stays on the blank. So it's a lot easier to work with, but we'll mix some of this up and then let's do this. Okay, and then one part that is always super hard to demonstrate on video is how to find the backbone or the spine of a blank. So some, some blanks, this is really easy to do and you can feel it. It's gonna feel kind of like a snap but it's this is 100% easier to show in person, but this is the butt side of the blank, and this is what you're gonna do. Uh, you're gonna put the butt end on the ground. Let's see if you can do it over here to get it. And you're gonna bend the blank, kind of, but like see right here where my hand is? This would be the tip, and you're gonna kind of bend it, but you're gonna put your hand like this on the blank, and you're gonna bend up, and you're going to kind of roll the blank around. Um, if you look at the button, you can see the white tag where it's rolling around, kind of. And I don't know if it's picking it up or not, but when I roll it, it's kind of like snapping over. That's the best way I can explain it. It's like... It's completely noticeable if you're doing this doing this in person. That's what I hate that I can't like really show the best way. But um, 
sometimes like you'll barely even feel any kind of a snap so about right here the top this I'd get I guess this would be the spine side of the blank we'll call it and I take a piece of tape and I just put it probably about like up here because and it won't get epoxy stuff on. I mean, you could use probably use like a silver sharpie or something or some kind of easy. But basically, all this does is so see. I got the piece of tape here. So this is going to be the spine of the blank. And basically, all that is is well, you have a spine in your body, and your spine lets you bend over forward fairly easily but not so much backwards. So, on the rod blank, uh, you decide yourself. Would you rather, it, it's completely like personal preference that whether, for me personally, I, 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 don't, it does, I don't really care that much because I like blanks where like the tip, the tip side is like kind of weak, but then once you get to the end part, the butt side, it gets pretty strong. So. For me, uh, it's fine just like not even finding it out. But if you wanted to, you can pick which side you want. So if you put all your guides. So yeah, basically if you're building a spinning or conventional reel rod, you would reverse it because um, conventional reels, the rod would be upside down, I guess. And then spinning reels would be the right way. But uh, whatever way you would want the rod blank to bend, either a little bit easier to bend or a little bit tougher to bend. It's all up to you. That's There's no real way to say which one you want. But yeah, so for it here, I guess we'll do it this way. And then yeah, we'll do it with the spine side up because you can actually feel bending it with your hands. There's a little bit of a difference. So we'll, that'll give us a little bit more lifting power and we are good to go. Almost. All right, so one thing I like to do is you put the butt grip first on the blank and you kind of put it all the way down to it's pretty, it basically just stops. Not You're not forcing it out. Like here, here you can see the it's really loose, but if you put it there, it just stops. So this is where it starts. The blank gets start, starting to get thick enough that the grip has to be pushed down. Like now I'm like kind of forcing it down there. And then here it's just completely loose. So wherever, just do, just do like that, wherever it stops. And then I take a piece of tape and I put it, this would be the tip side of the rod blank and I put it up here as a kind of a reminder. Once again, you could use like a marker or something. But yeah, you put that there like so. And then you take, this is weird. <laughs> I'm like looking at this upside down. So then you take the grip off. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix up the epoxy and you're gonna cover this from this tape all the way down with epoxy. And what that's gonna do, once you put the epoxy on, you're gonna kinda twist and push up and down on the grip so that it kinda coats all the inside of it and then you're gonna, and then the, it'll kind of lubricate the blank, so it makes it slide down a little bit easier. Where if you didn't have that, it wouldn't slide down. And hopefully, it goes fairly easily all the way down to the top of this tape. Sometimes it doesn't work right. Like what I was talking about before, I was gonna build uh, some gaffs that for the first time I wasn't able to push the grip all the way down and now I gotta reorder them. But yeah, that's basically, if you mess it up, um, you're gonna have to cut it off with uh, like a box cutter, it always makes it easy. And you just cut it off and, well, it kinda sucks you have to order a new one because then you have to wait a couple of days. But yeah, you just order a new one. Um, it's not a big deal, it happens. Um, hopefully not now while I'm <laughs> making a video. So let's mix this epoxy and Put the grip on. Figure I may as well show this just so it makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, you can see the white one and the brownish one, uh, the two parts of epoxy. Hopefully, this is the right matchup. Kind of, I kind of just eyeball it. Probably um, measure it in a specific kind of way. But where's the fun in that? You know, you you 
It, it wouldn't be as cool if you're fighting a fish and then um, your grips just kind of fall off. No, I've never, I've never had that happen. <laughs> uh, I don't think. I think this is kind of a little bit forgiving of a thing. There's like a chunk in there. That might not be good, but yeah, don't, uh, don't worry about it. Just uh, make sure you mix a, enough of it, and you should have at least a few minutes before it kind of starts hardening. So you don't got to go too, too quickly, but you want to make sure it's mixed up. Yeah, that's all I mix is just for enough for the one part. So. Let's put this on. All right, so you might want to do this part outside, but I'm doing it inside. I got a piece of paper here, so hopefully that'll catch some of the excess epoxy. But like I said before, you have where your piece of tape where the grip starts to get tight on the rod blank. And all you're gonna do is take your popsicle stick. Hopefully you have that or whatever you're using. You can use a piece of cardboard, but popsicle sticks makes it a lot easier. And you're basically just gonna put a nice coating all the way down to the end. You can go over the tape because once you peel it off that'll take off the epoxy but all the way to here which in here will be the butt cap so let's do it. Got our epoxy and uh, put it in the nozzle. Kind of see it? Yeah, kind of see it there. This is probably not the most exciting thing in the world but you just want to make sure there's a good, cause up here more so than the bottom because up here is you want you want a lot more epoxy because you're going to be putting the grip on and turning it around uh, so it uh, gets nicely coated all inside the the grip and it'll get a nice seal on the blank. And then you should never have any problems with it. And once again to clean it up, I probably should have got it out first. Uh, like I said, it's been like a year since the last rod I built, so I'm kind of remembering everything I need as I go. But uh, you can use alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, that will clean up the epoxy. Uh, one rod builder that taught me, I believe he has his own company now, because he used to work for Chaos. And Brian Connolly, I need to go check out his store. Let's say what's up to him. I haven't talked to him in a long time. But he always told me, uh, I think it's called Toluene, Toluene or something. It's kind of like... I believe it's a form of paint thinner or something, but not as potent or something, I don't know. I don't know, I always used, used to use that. And you can also use paint thinner, and that will just clean up all this quite very nicely. Definitely it works a lot better than the rubbing alcohol, but rubbing alcohol is what I got, so we'll use that to clean it up. Probably could have mixed a little bit more epoxy. Definitely easier to mix more epoxy than you need than mixing some and then needing more and then having to go back and mix it. But actually, I think this will be enough. And all I'm hoping for right now is I don't I can get this grip down, and this doesn't make me look like an idiot and get stuck halfway down and have to cut it off. And yeah, got a little bit of good coating on there, so it's kind of starting to get a little. Uh, sticky so it's starting to harden so let's see if we can do this we got one try and then we'll have to order another one so got the butt cap or the butt grip coming down to here as you can see it kind of beads it up and you kind of put it down you can see here where the tape is but it's still going down a little bit easier that's because the Epoxy is kind of lubricating the blank, and see, I, you turn the grip around, you kind of bend it around, stuff. You just want to make sure that the epoxy is coating the entire inside of the rod blank. So basically, you get one try at this, and you got to do it all in one motion and pushing it down. So let's see. Hopefully I don't hurt my arm, as you can see. It's a cut, but it kind of hurt my muscle. So let's see. Here we go. And I got... I don't want to get epoxy all over the grip. So let's see. We did it! Probably looked a little weird, but 
I'm a skinny guy, as you can probably tell, and that's how skinny guys do it. And we got it. So you can see there's a, a bunch of excess epoxy. And you can do it that, you just take popsicles, popsicle stick. Oh, I told you I epoxy. Oh, that's nice. Well, also, don't wear shirts you like when you're doing this, because now I got a bunch of epoxy. That's one part, and now to do the real seat. Yeah, we got ourselves a nice epoxy. So now I guess this Guy Harvey shirt is actually gonna be a fishing shirt now, because now I don't care about it. All right, so I haven't done anything yet, but there's still the leftover epoxy on there. Captain, please do not walk into this, dog, because you're gonna get epoxy stuck to your, <laughs> all your hair. That probably wouldn't be fun for you, but I'm just gonna take some rubbing alcohol, and paper towels and clean this off a little bit because it's starting to harden and get sticky on there and that would complicate things. Alright, so that's cleaned up now and it's real seat time. Oh, got the real seat right here. And as you can see, hopefully, it's uh, a lot bigger than the rod blank. So we're gonna do our arbor now, like I was talking about. And we're gonna do that with tape so that we put this on. All right, so as you can see here, we're starting to tape it up a little bit and we got our real seat here. And I know this is in center. I'm gonna, I'm gonna center it afterwards, but I just wanted to show this part so that I can just start doing all this and not have to pause. But basically, um, sometimes you can get away with doing just two uh, the pieces of tape, but it's also nice to have the third piece of tape in the middle. It's also nice to have it focused. Why is my camera, my cameras aren't being that happy tonight? But yeah, you can see here, hopefully this piece is a lot thicker than the others because you can see here the, Real seats, not tight to the blank, but once you get up to here, it's a little bit better. I'm gonna have to make this a little bit more thicker. You basically just want it to where, uh, it could still slide, but it kind of catches. So yeah, you slide it down, and here you can see it moves a lot more because it's not thick here. But here, at the bottom part, not really, it probably could use a couple more go arounds with the tape and that'd be fine. But yeah, that's all you do. And then we're gonna go back and I'm gonna show it of course, and coat this with epoxy and slide this down. All right, so you guys kind of get a guest appearance from Captain, my dog in the background trying to sleep a little bit. And this is gonna show you that I kind of made it a little too thick with the tape. So you can see the real seat actually doesn't fit down it. So that's why once you start getting towards the end, it's nice to kind of do this in like strips of tape. Let's see if you take that much. Will it? Not too much. Will it fit? Oops, not too much. What the hell? Oh yeah, well, that's one strip of tape. How about that? Still, okay, so that'll go down, but it's a little too tight. So we'll take a couple, another strips off. And this is not some super exact thing you have to do. Let's see there. See how that is. Okay, that'll work. So, See, it still moves around a little bit, but actually I wanna put probably one more like overlap of tape and that'll probably be thick enough, but then I'm gonna do it, well, I'm gonna center this piece a little bit more here and then this piece will uh, 
you don't want it to like stick out there but you put a little bit like an inch or so down and yeah all right so one thing i forgot to mention i, I found my masking tape this size masking tape or thinner masking tape is a lot easier to work with than the thick painters tape i was using before but as you can see we have our three pieces of masking tape on there and as you can see i left some gaps and that's a key part because you want the epoxy touching as much as the blank as possible so that it also touches the inside of the real seat and that makes the connection a lot stronger which the epoxy will soak into the masking tape and like cure and that'll also harden up but you know it feels a little bit better knowing that the epoxy is also touching the rod blank so we got our real seat here and slide it down and as you can see now it it moves a little bit but it's not gonna I mean, you can make it so it doesn't move at all, like exactly, but it's okay if it does, but it's like, I mean, like you can't even really notice, like I can only notice it because I can feel it, but it barely moves at all. So yeah, we got that. And now what you're going to want to do is if you cared, like you remember before, I put this piece of tape for the spine of the rod, you're going to line where the real seat, which would be here where you can't see because the lights are flicking off. Man, so many things could be so much easier, but they're just not. As you can see, it says American, which I guess it's American Tackle Company is the maker of this. Real seat is, can I show it? Um, when you put your reel on, as you know. Oh my gosh, I'm, I need three hands. So you put your real seat in here like so. It goes like that. So you want to line up where your reel is going to sit. Which, this is being difficult for no reason. So you can see here, that's where the reel part goes into. You're going to want to line that up with there. So let's put the epoxy on. All right, so now time to put the epoxy on. And I'm glad Captain just chose like the complete background of the video, which I like. Um, Captain likes building rods also, so yeah, we got this part and we got the old epoxy, where's my hand? I don't know what to do with my hands. The old epoxy right here that I scraped off the butt of the, from, the butt of the blank from when we, ooh, this might be a little, okay, I just mixed, this is a little hardened up. All right, we're going to try it. I, I would probably wouldn't recommend doing this, but this is me being lazy and not wanting to mix. You know what? We're not going to be lazy. We're going to mix up a new batch. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> As you can see, it's kind of like... Normally, it, it's a little bit looser, but it's starting to cure, and that'll be kind of a pain to put on the blank. So we're going to mix up some real quick. All right, so we mixed up some epoxy as you can see here it's a lot newer <laughs> a lot easier to work with so we're gonna coat this and remember what i said actually ooh, well that's a good thing to remember so one way to save you some trouble is put that guy all the way up put that guy all the way up and take some masking tape whatever painters tape anything and put it around the real seat. And what this will do is make cleaning up the real seat a little bit easier because I don't know if it comes out. It's hard to tell from here, but basically I just put tape over it and in case when of course as you saw when I pushed the rear grip down it kind of bubbled up the epoxy and it's gonna probably do the same thing here and this way it'll get over the tape and you just peel it off and makes it a lot easier, trust me, to clean it up than trying to, instead of trying to get uh, the epoxy out of the screw grooves or whatever. So do, same on the top side. Now we'll put the epoxy 
all around here and you want to make sure there's a good amount touching the rod blank and then also touching the inside of that so let's do it up one really funny thing like uh i forget what it had to be a year ago i made the last rod building video um the spinning reel rod i made and one of my friends on facebook while i'm thinking of it you should also put some tape on the grip which you can also clean with rubbing alcohol but this makes cleaning that part up a lot easier because you just peel the tape off but yeah one of my like buddies on facebook started to get into a rod building and i was like dude you're doing sick you like made some pretty sweet wraps on some rods and i was like dude that badass looking rod you made and <laughs> He's like, yo, I totally watched your rod building video and it helped me out with a bunch of stuff. Which I was like, what? That was actual, that was actual reaction. I, like, you told me that and I was like, what? But uh, I don't know, that's like really funny to me because that's, that's like what I want. I want. I want people to see some of this stuff because I mean, I, I guess it, I, I wouldn't consider it bragging or whatever, it's just, it is what it is. I know a lot about fishing, and if I can teach other people this, and he's doing like his own rod style stuff too. It's just, he, I guess he got like some idea stuff from the video I made, and he did his own thing, which that's cool as hell. That's what I want people to do. Like, you take what you want from this video and go uh, build a rod yourself however you want you want you want to do it you want to change some different things up if i'm doing something you think's wrong go do something different that's the cool thing about it but that's all i want from uh i guess making youtube fishing videos is show people how to do some things and go try it i mean go try it out and make up your own kind of thing i mean that's like literally how i learned everything i know from fishing is asking some people some things and then just going out and actually doing it myself. Which I've always said, the Florida Sportsman Fishing Forum. Um, I've met so many people from there and talked to so many people from there that give me ideas and everything about how to, about fishing stuff. And I've learned so much and I literally say half of everything I know about fishing is as I've, uh, I've learned from the Florida Sportsman Fishing Forum and then what about the other half is going out and just doing it and then making up my own kind of way. And then from like, also from like meeting people. Also, I'm probably putting a lot more epoxy than you probably need, but even though it'll just come off as access epoxy, but too much won't hurt it. So, make sure that, and put some here at the top. But yeah, like I highly recommend if you like fishing at all, or like probably not at all. If you're like fishing every once in a while, this probably wouldn't be something you want to invest in doing. But if you fish a lot, at least I would definitely recommend to build your own fishing rod because it's the coolest feeling ever to catch. I mean, like any fish, but if you catch like a good damn fish, like a few of the rods I built, I've caught some like nice swordfish on and I've been like, yo, I totally built that rod and it held up to catching a badass swordfish. And like, that was probably like one of the coolest things ever to me. So hopefully we get this rod together and we can catch ourselves a cool damn fish because it really is a cool feeling to catch a nice fish on some kind of, on a rod you built yourself. So, yeah, like I said before, you're gonna want to aim this kind of how you want it. Other, if you don't care about the spine thing, you don't have to. And can't see here, but the piece of tape I have up at the top. What kind of door? Um, where is it? This piece of tape here. So. I'm going to try and line the grip up with that and slide it down. You can also recover some of this access as you push it 
down. Because we can, I'll show you what we can do with that in a second. Push it down. Turn like that. So you want this part like that. And we'll take. I'm moving my hand on the way. I'm just peeling off the epoxy that got pushed out when we push that down. Put it here. And once again, you just want to make sure, twist it around, move it around a little bit. You just want to make sure there's a good coating of epoxy. So pull it back up a little bit. Put it back around and you know, so. Some got pushed out of there. Right back in like that. You see some parts that didn't get coated nice. Oh god. You got a little bit it's got a little bit sloppy. But yeah, put it down. Twist it around. Push it. Make sure this is lined up best we can. I'm not super exact with it, but some people are super exact about stuff and should be super exact about it if you are. Get some of this access. That one right there. Got a real seat on there. Fairly easy. There, I'm sure it's still lined up a little bit, so yeah. That's how you put the real seat on. A good seal from the grip to the blank. And then now, you push. All right, so as you can clearly see, we failed pretty good. Uh, that's all we could get the grip down before it didn't want to go no more. <laughs> Maybe we didn't get the correct size grip. But this is all it would go, and it needs to go all the way to here. So that really sucks, because now I need to order a new one. But uh, we'll do that, and then now I could show you how to unmess up if you mess up. If you get that stuck on there, all you do is cut this off, and I'm not exactly sure where my box cutters are, but I got a good pocket knife here, and you just kind of cut through the grip. You also want to make sure not to cut through too deep, that you like kind of hit the rod blank. But yeah, that sucks, but. It happened. Finally got the new grips in, and I'm gonna show you what the difference is. So the original grip was six inches by three eighths inch. So this would be the old one, you could tell, because we cut it right down the middle. The second one I got, also six inches, but it's a half inch. And this one seems like a pretty good fit. Uh, goes down, loose, but it stops right about here. And you can see I, I don't want to push it too tight because it'll get stuck. Um, yeah, so it goes almost all the way down, but it starts getting pretty tight here. So we got to push it that much, which is a lot more reasonable than the one that stopped almost at the top of the blank. So yeah, uh, we'll do that up. And at the same time, I'm not going to show it because it's going to be the same thing as the first. All right, one thing I forgot to mention, so you can see we got the grip pushed down. Um, make sure to put tape around the real seal like that, because as you can see, the epoxy is dripping down onto it, and then all you do is peel it off and the epoxy comes right off. You can see it 
it's gonna drip down onto the tape. Then you just pull the tape off, and that gets the epoxy off. Probably should have put some tape around the grip itself so that it doesn't go up on there. It makes it a little bit easier to clean. And yeah, wait for this to dry, and we can start wrapping up some of the guides. Okay, so I've actually finished the rod, epoxy's on, and everything. And there's some parts I didn't think I explained all that well, and some parts that straight up weren't even in focus, so it makes it kind of difficult to see things. So I'm gonna redo a couple. And as you can see, here's the blank, and I'm gonna show you how to do the knot, if you can call it that, the wrap or whatever. So I'm using pink thread instead of the purple. And I got the piece of tape on the pink thread, and you're gonna put that on the blank. So I'm only gonna show you how to do a band, but if you're doing like the under wrap of it or anything, it's the exact same thing. It's just a lot longer than what we're gonna do. But, so we're gonna try and put a band like around here or something. So you got tape on, hold the tag end of the thread on the rod, and you just twist. So, say we want the band to be around right here. You do it more exact and everything. You get yourself a ruler and you can measure how far and stuff like that, how long you want it. it makes it much easier. So we got it there, and you're just gonna wrap around. So now you can kind of see the thread is coming back to itself. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go over top of it. So here, exaggerate it a little bit. You can see I'm over the thread that we went down going up it. So now I'm just gonna put it closer together. And especially when you're doing under wraps, you wanna make sure to align the threads on there pretty tight. So you just go over it, but it's still twisting, and keep it close together. We're gonna go over it again. And then you're just gonna to wanna to go over it a couple, a few times, probably five, six, seven times. You don't wanna to do too many, because you'll see for yourself, that it kind of leaves a line. Where the line's coming up, you'll actually see that line coming up underneath the thread. So, a few times on that, peel off the tape. So now the tag end's loose, you can see. And cut it however you can cut it. So I, I always like using box cutters. The mud hole kit thing came with these little scissors things that are pretty cool. Got like a box cutter like this, this one's a lot sharper. But I'm just gonna use the scissors and all you're gonna do is clip the tag in short as you can, close as you can. So it's clipped and always make sure you're keeping tension on the thread because if you, if you let go at all, it'll completely fall apart. So you got it and you're just gonna keep on wrapping. Actually, you can also, if it comes the part a little bit, push it together, and yeah, you just wrap however long you need to. Since we're going to be, show, I'm just going to show you how to do a quick little band, but it's the same knot and everything any other time you do it. So, so we got it there, and then now I got a piece of fishing line tied in like a loop. You can use whatever. Uh, I always recommend using solid color thread if you're gonna make the loop with it. Like, the pink not like metallic colors like this blue and gold because the metallic colors can pull apart and that makes this part much more difficult. But yeah, so you're gonna take the loop while keeping tension on it. We're gonna put it underneath the thread. And then you're just going to pull it, and you're going to go probably five or six more times over the loop. In this case, it's monofilament. So you wrap over that. And this is how it will stay on. So it's basically a lot of it's all pressure. I don't even know, I wouldn't even know if this is considered like a knot. But you go over it. Yeah, like five or six times is probably good. There. Like that. You can kind of see I went over it. And then, uh, come to your spool line. 
holding it, so you can't really do it. Here, you gotta see. And then click, cut it. Oh, miss. Cut it. So you take your finger. And put it here, so you got keep tension on it. So now I let go of this, and you're gonna take the piece, thread you just cut, and if it would cooperate, put it through the loop, and then pull it tight. That goes through. Yeah. So pull it through, and then now hold on to the tie again and let go. You can see it's pulled apart here, but you can push that back down. And also when we do this, it should pull it together. So take this end, and then you just pull it tight. And as you'll see it, it's pulling the thread underneath the wraps of thread you just did. So right here, you can see now it's coming out. And then you're going to like let go of this side. Stay focused. That. So now it came through. Now you can see the tag ends here, and no tension on it. You can make it pull it a little tighter, just make sure. Not too much, it'll could mess it up. So like that. And then this part, I recommend using the box cutter, or if you have some sort of sharp knife. So when we put the thread through, it's coming through on the right side. So if you did it the opposite way, basically you want to do this the opposite way the threads coming through because if you did it like say underneath it or here like that um, it's not gonna really it's gonna cut it but it's gonna leave uh, like a tuft of thread so what you're gonna do is come on the back side of it like this it's really hard because the rod keeps moving I don't have it in the holder over top of it like that and then you're gonna want to pull pull the thread you don't really want to cut with the box cutter at all so you're going to pull the thread over it, like that. Hopefully it showed. <laughs> but yeah, you're just going to pull the thread over it. And what that should do is it kind of like snaps the thread underneath the thread wrap you just did. So make sure it's nice and in line, like that. And that's how you do it. So if you're making like, here's a kind of a spoiler, this is the finished rod. So if you're doing like the long purple, then you just make it that long. It's the same thing. And also when I'm talking about how uh, when you're cutting it that you want to make sure there's no tough of line. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Here, you can see it here on the gold band. You can kind of see it sticking out. There, I did not do it correctly. And... Uh, you could feel it, it's like sharp because the epoxy's on it now and you can see it there. So that's why you want to do that right. I'm actually glad a couple things on this rod didn't come out correctly so you can see how not to do that. But yeah, that's how you just do it. And then when you're doing it over the rod guides, it's the same exact thing. Okay, so first step on putting on the guides would be the tip guide. So you can see here. Uh, we got the rod blank all the way this way across the room because there's the guide. Fortunately, I'm totally just noticing that the other guides aren't going to match. You can see that these guides are blackish, or I mean, are black. This is a bit like gray, I think. So, how to put this bad boy on? Extremely easy. So, I'm assuming this is like a hot glue kind of stick. I don't know. I got it when it came with something like part of a kit. I think it came with the epoxy. Anyway, uh, I've seen different things. Uh, to me, this looks like hot glue. I don't know if it is or is not, but yeah, basically it's just a stick. And what you're going to want to do, hopefully see here. So yeah, all you're going to do, take box cutter or whatever sharp, or sharp object you are using. I recommend box cutter. Take box cutter and all you do is just Pretty much just shave off a piece that's small enough that will just fit into the hole of the guide, tip guide. Like that. Probably put a little bit more. But yeah, so that's like that. And I'm going to do this in the bathroom for the ventilation because it's probably not good inhaling this stuff. And all you do is basically just take a cigarette lighter and 
you just you don't I don't, you kind of hold it close. Uh, you you don't really want to because like you burn the guide kind of, but just close enough so that a lot of the heat's getting to it and that it, it'll melt. And then all you do is just put it on the rod tip, and it'll dry fairly quickly. Like you only have, I'd probably say 10, 15 seconds to before it starts setting, and then you can't really move it. But if you want to get it off, you just reheat it again. So this is. This is like a common problem on fishing rods, but that's because like I've left car rods in the car and from the heat of the car, uh, the tip guide will always get loose. But it's a super simple fix now that you're building rods. All you do is pop a little piece off of this, put it in there, and there you go. Because I mean, all it is is heat. So if you ever have a rod tip guide moving like that, now you know how to fix it, super simple. So let's go do that. Also, I forgot to say, kind of important, <laughs> uh, you want to line it up with your real seat so that, because this is going to be your starting point. So let's see, right now the real seat is there. So it's probably going to want to be like this. So we're going to want to put it on here because now once this sets, you're going to line up all the rest of your guides facing with this guide. So like the next guide is going to go on here and we will, I will put this on and then I'll show you how to space them out. So I'm not really sure of a good way to show this, but now I'm going to talk about spacing out your guides. So I'm pretty sure there's some exact measurement stuff you can do to figure out the proper distances to space out your guides. But uh, yeah, I've never really done that. All I've ever really done is I put the reel on the rod, where's my finger, as you can see, and the reel seat, which looks pretty cool. I actually like that. The black, the blue line, and the purple looks pretty good. So you put the reel on, you got the tip on, can't see the line, unfortunately, because it's clear blue line, but uh, I just put the line through the tip, and all I'm going to do is bend the rod over. Right, I don't really think there's really a way I can show this but basically I have the line up the blank and through the tip and we go put the drag on all right this is kind of hard to show because the conventional style reel wants to spin the blank around so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a guide the guide that goes up here after the tip and I'm going to put it on the blank and I'm gonna pull the line how it would be if there were guides there to see where all right so hopefully I can get this to come out right because this is actually kind of difficult to show on camera especially by myself um, so I got the guide this will be the first guide it's if you don't know the tip and you're gonna go from smallest guys to biggest guys to the bottom so you got the smallest one and there's three of these three yeah, three of these same size ones, so this will be after the tip. Basically what I did, I just threaded it through the fishing line, which is hard to show because fishing line is supposed to be clear. <laughs> and uh, yeah, put the line through, line through the tip. Hopefully this rod will stay right, but like, yeah, like I said before, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure there's some like length measurement kind of deal that you want to, you can do but I've never really done that. All I have ever done, uh, every rod I've made, is do it like this. So I put the guide through. So what you want to do is put drag on the reel so that the line will stay tight. And you kind of want to move the guide up and down to see when you're pulling from the tip, like as if there's a fish on it, bending it to where the line won't touch the blank. The, guy, the point of the guide is to hold the line off the blank. So you want to slide it up and down like here. If I, like say you're going to put it like here. On the, the blank, when the blank bends, clearly the line, I mean clearly for me I can see it, you probably can't, but the line is touching the blank. So you got to move it up. So right about here, unless you're completely <laughs> sticking the fish, which you probably want to do because it might break the rod. Probably about around here. Where we're going to want the first guide because the line is not touching the blank of the rod. 
which I'm sure you can't see because once again it's clear line but if I wish I had high vis line but hopefully you understand what I'm saying you don't want the line touching the blank so you're gonna position the guide where it's not touching the blank because see if I put it here the line is touching the blank up here even though I'm bending it pretty hard the line is not touching the blank so we'll put it there and then put a piece of tape to remember the rough area around. Alright so we got the under wrap on. I don't know if that's the correct technical term for it but that's what I'm calling under wrap is the wrap under the guide. So to me that's an under wrap. <laughs> but yeah I'm not 100% on what kind of like color scheme deal I'm gonna do but I'm definitely gonna be doing purple under wraps for the guides so we can at least start that part and tilt this the right way so basically like I showed previously uh, on how to do that knot you just do the same thing all the way up I guess if you want to measure things you'd like use a ruler or whatever and you'd measure each one on how, how long so like however if that however many inches that is I don't know, I'm not measuring it, I just do it by eyeball. I'm gonna try and get each of these three the same length of thread on the blank. So we put that, we throw down the purple on it, and then we're gonna put this guide over it. So I need to figure out what kind of design I'm going to do, whether I'm going to come back over with the purple thread again, just over that, I don't, I don't know, I feel like it's super, my hand's in the light. I feel like it's super basic if I just leave this all purple. Once we get this one on, we're gonna do the same thing of putting the line, putting the reel on the rod and running the line through, see where it bends out. All right, I'm not entirely sure where we left off the last time, but I'm guessing it was somewhere around here where we just got the under wrap of the guide on the blank. So. Now to put the guide on. And I think I do remember saying I haven't quite come up with what kind of color scheme I'm gonna do other than the purple. But I was looking, I think I just might do some simple kind of thing, put like two gold bands on the edges. Uh, I might try and incorporate one of these blues. This blue kind of looks cool, that blue looks dark blue. Maybe this blue, it's a little bit paler. It's like a solid color, not metallic. Uh, the Solid blue might look kind of cool with the purple. I don't know, those kind of look together. To me, they kind of flow together, so we'll see. Uh, not entirely sure on that, but I'm definitely going to do this full. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do each guide full purple and then add something on to the end afterward. But yeah, now the next step. I wanted to wait till we got to the bigger guides because it's a lot easier to show. But yeah, we're here. So hopefully this doesn't come unraveled to tape off. I didn't measure, I think I was talking about measuring before also. And actually as it turns out, I did this almost perfectly. So try and get it, it's, all, it's basically on point to almost like one and a half inches. So we have three of these guides. So I'm gonna do the next two also one and a half inches. So we'll have to measure down. So I don't know if it's a thing, but I was thinking, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else do it, so I'm pretty sure, to me, I came up with this myself. Uh, I'm gonna try and cut masking tape into like thin strips that are one and a half inches long, and I'm gonna measure out just like I did before with where this guide goes on the blank, and I'm just gonna put the tiny little strip on the blank, and I'm just gonna go over, over put the wrap over that little piece of tape so I can just get the matching length three times like that. So we're gonna try and do that. Um, but we'll worry about that once we get to that point. For now, let's finish up this guide. So you take the guide, put this in manual mode. Hopefully this will stay somewhat focused, but uh, if you can tell, the, it's hard to see there. You can kind of see. <laughs> you can see the foot of the guide. There's two of them on each side, like these points. It comes to like kind of a sharp point. Not really sharp, but pointed. And they have like, I don't know if it's some kind of paint or whatever over it that kind of makes it uneven and thick. So 
what you're gonna do, this is a knife sharpener. You're gonna take it kind of at an angle because you only really want the tip. You can do like the whole thing to make sure it's to make sure like the whole bottom part of it's decently flat. This is not a focus, I know for whatever reason it doesn't want to be. Um, yeah, you're just gonna you could just like do it flat kinda. I have to put my finger over it to hold it down. I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit. It's gonna scrape it up. Probably see some of the black left on there. It's hard. There, you can kind of see it's somewhat silver now. Um, yeah, you just kind of do that a little bit to make sure it's flat. And then, once it's relatively flat, also this might burn. Yeah, that's already really hot on my finger. Yeah, you pretty much just want to. This is a, it's kind of, it's pretty much just like sanding it just a little bit so that it's flat and then one little trick you can do is if you were to normally do this and I actually tried previously I, it fell apart then this is why um, what you're putting the thread over it over here once it it's pretty it's very easy to put it on and then once you get to here because it's kind of like it's hard to sh it's, it's so, I guess tapered would be the word it's tapered down. And you can even do the top of it also to kind of smooth it out, make it a little bit easier transition. But that's all basically this is doing, is making it so it's an easier transition from this part onto the blank, which or onto the thread. Because if you didn't do this, it would just that once you got to the end where it starts getting tapered down, the thread will just like snap off and then there'll be a little, I could probably find a rod. Let me go find a rod and I'll show you what it looks like. I found a rod, kind of shows it. Sometimes it's more noticeable. Hopefully this is more in focus. I had to change the lenses. Right here, you can see, where it's kind of like a silver mark. This is in focus. Kind of see the silver mark and that's, Where's the guide? That's the tip of the guide. This is, I don't know where, I bought this rod a long, long time ago. Um, I don't know if it's a, I'm guessing it's a custom rod because it's kind of, looks like, I don't know where, but that's the tip of the guide. You can see it right here. So whoever did it, you can actually feel it through the epoxy. So whoever did it, didn't quite sand it down. So the thread, the black, here in this case, they did black thread. Um, snapped over it and then like the foot the tip tip of the foot of the guide is poking through the thread so we're going to try and not let that happen also a little trick you can do if you get a black permanent marker um you can just go over it it'll also help hide it a little bit but that's what we're trying to avoid because if you get this to be a smooth transition then that does not happen sand it down Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then to finish it off, you can, if you kind of put the point down, if I can show it, because my hand's in the light. If you put the point, like point it down, you don't want to do it too much because it'll poke through, but you can kind of bend up the tip of it, and that'll kind of stop the thread from snapping down. You don't want to do it too hard, just a, li just a little bit, because it's like a tiny piece of thread that'll, that'll catch. So that's one way to do it. Then you're going to do it to the same, the opposite side. Do you have it? So I was just talking about permanent marker. It's regular Sharpie. Kind of hopefully see where it's silver. It's because we scraped it off. And you just kind of do some of that. It's hard to see because now it's looking like a reflection, but you can see now it's all black. Probably a lot easier to tell on the so you see silver, black. So that'll cover it up. So I'm gonna do that both sides and show you how to put it on. Okay, so we got the guide on there. I just put a little piece of finally found some of my painter's tape. And I put that on and you pretty much just align it in between so it's kind of evenly spaced. And also that the guide is pointed 
the tip. Actually on this, I'm gonna have to move the tip a little to the right, so I'm gonna have to reheat it again. It's not quite lined up. I think once I put it on, it might have moved a little bit. So, as we did before, same thing. Put tape on the one end, thread, tape it a blank, thread here, and you're gonna twist a whole bunch. It's hard to do it here because it's the blank's so thin it's hard to hold on to it. So you can come down a little bit more. There. So you're gonna go over the foot. This is as much as I can zoom in. This is not a good angle. So right here you can see that piece of the thread is over the foot of the guide. And all you're gonna do is hold it tight. Make sure that guide hasn't moved. You can also, once this is on there, you can also move it a little bit. So you're just gonna come down it, come down the foot of the guide, go over the piece of thread to lock it down, and make sure it's all aligned. You like wanna make it, I'm sitting so far away from it because the camera, I can't really tell. You don't want to, so you want to make sure the thread's on there tight because this is part of what holds the rod guide on the blank. The other part is the epoxy, but not too tight that it goes in between the grooves of the under wrap thread, which you'll get a feel for it. That. Now we have this piece of the tag in loose. All right, so I fixed it up. It was kind of just so, yeah. It actually turned out pretty good, I'm pretty sure. So, next thing to do is finish it off. Gotta keep it. I, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna have to figure out something better with the camera because this is taking me forever to do because the camera is in the way. So this is the same thing before as I was doing with the black piece of thread. It's just a piece of monofilament, which actually is easier, but it probably should get a little bit thin. This is like 20 pound test. Probably be better with 10 pound or something. Put it like that. I mean, thread works pretty well. Then you just go over it a few times. Always remember, I mean, it's not focused, but it's just like we did before. Keep your finger on it so it won't come apart. Cut the thread from the spool. It's a really bad job. Thread through the loop. Turns tight. And then pull the other side of the loop. That. And. We can get this right. The blade. So, um, it's hard to tell, but this thread is going like this way to the right. So it goes underneath. So you're going to put it on the right side and pull this back over. So it will kind of snap. It'll snap into under the old thread. Remember, you don't want to saw. If you don't want to like go back and forth, you just want to pull the thread over it, and it'll cut. That's why a sharp one of these is important. So that's not bad. Yeah. 
It's the first part of the guide. The second part, put the other side on. So I'm going to do that off camera because it takes forever. It's the exact same thing. And the exact same knot, everything. And I'll show it again once it's finished, and then we'll move on to a bigger guide further down the rod. So this is finished product, and I believe this is the color scheme I'm going to go with. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because of light in my hand, but we got purple on there. And yes, I know these are uneven. I'm going to redo them, but I just figured to do them real quick. And through, which one did I do first? I put this blue on, but I don't know if I'm going to use this or not, because I think this blue might be a little old, because when I'm putting it on, the metallic's kind of coming off of it. So it's sort of turning up silverish. I don't know. We'll have to see. But... Yeah, I got a band of blue there, band of blue here, and then finished it with band of gold on each side. So, yeah, I didn't show it, but it's the same thing. It's the same knot, just you're just doing it way shorter. So, figure out where the next guy goes, which will probably be around here. Once again, put the reel on the rod, run the line through, and we'll find out where the next one goes. So, the next guy I'll show you is probably like one of the last guides because it's a lot thicker guide and it's a lot easier to work with and show that's what the smaller guides are always the hardest just because it's so small we got a couple of guides on well three of them you can't really see this one but i gotta go back and redo some of the gold bands and stuff but i don't remember if i should i think this is the kind of color combo deal got the gold bands on the outside this turk turquoise Kind of what color that is, I don't know. Aqua, whatever. Lighter blue color on the inside and then the purple. So we're gonna do that all the way down. And I think that's the kind of design I'm gonna use. And then I think I have like the, I believe it's called like the butt wrap, but the end of the rod wrap. Uh, I think I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. And then now I figured, since we're moving on to a little bit bigger guide. I don't remember if I said I was gonna try and figure out some way to kinda get every like the wraps evenly lengthwise to be pretty similar. Uh, again, if you really wanna be sp super specific about stuff, you get a ruler and measure out everything like that. I'm not, so uh, that's up to you. This is how I'm doing it. But uh, yeah, this seems to be working how I don't know if I said I was going to try and, so I measured out, this is going to be the next guide on, and hopefully you can tell it's bigger, it's a little bit bigger size, so there's going to be two of these to go on after, and now we can space them a little further apart, because since these are bigger, it's going to hold the line higher off the blank, so it's going to go a little bit further down, actually not by much, but once you start getting further down, they'll start getting spaced apart. Measured out. Well, I put the line through like I've been doing and bend the rod to see how high or low to put this to where the line in between these two guides isn't going to touch the blank. So, came up with this area and if you measure it, the guide is about, kind of hard to tell, one and a half inches, if not exact. So, figured make the piece of tape two, or I guess it would be the purple here, that wrap, two inches. So if I move this to the middle, it gives me a quarter of an inch on each side of the foot of the guide. So like, this one was what, an inch? Yeah, so that one's an inch. See, so like here, and here, just past the foot of the guide, we'll have a quarter of an inch of spare space to work with. So, yeah. Just measured out a piece of masking tape. Right here you can see, two inches. And then once we put it on, we can size it up in the middle. So we get that quarter of an inch on each side, and then what I've been doing, I originally, I think I did say I was doing this. I don't remember. I have to go back and watch the recordings. But um, 
I think I originally said I was gonna leave this piece of tape on there and do a wrap over it, but what I've been doing actually is starting the wrap and then peeling this off kinda as I go down. Like I peel it off until I get to like here. And then all I do is, so you can see, kind of a little loop-de-loop, -loop, and I kind of just match it up to where the other piece ends, like this. Kind of make sure it's stuck, and I just peel it like that. And then I stop the wrap right there and then take that off, which seems to be working out all right. Again, there's probably ways to measure this so that super specific but you know I don't I'm not doing that but yeah continue on wrapping so right here you can kinda of see the thread wrapping it's all black on there left a little space here and basically all I'm going to be doing is the same kind of deal that we've been doing with the wrappings just I'm gonna kinda of angle it so I'm just gonna show this really quick probably not gonna be at all my design but maybe close to it I don't know we'll see I still have no idea I've not come up with a design or anything so I'm gonna tape like we've been doing with the uh, I guess the knot or however we start a normal wrap but I'm gonna start it here I'm gonna go up to here this is where it's raw blank and here's a black thread hopefully it can tell and then we're gonna go like that Hopefully it's kind of in focus, but it's just like once again, it's the same stuff. We're gonna go a little bit higher than the black thread. A little bit higher than the back thre black thread. And we'll do our usual over. Over the line. Actually, instead, I'm not gonna finish this part. Because I'm just going to take this off right now. I'm just doing this to show. So I take this. Hopefully, my idea. But yeah, you'd normally like we'd cut that off. But so we got our little band here. And normally, where we'd be going to keep it in a straight line, we're actually going to angle it like this. So now you can see, don't pay attention to this one. I just hope this doesn't come apart just because I'm trying to show. So we do like that. And obviously you want to make sure this is kind of evenly spaced apart. I just do it by eye. And then I'd go all the way down to the butt side of the rod down here, but I'm not going to. And then we're gonna go stop it. So say here is the around the foregrip of the blank. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna make a little bit of a band here. Up a little more here to keep that in place. So that's about where it touches, and then we're gonna go back up. And we're going to start, it's going to start making crisscrosses. So you're going to kind of want to, so right here you can see it's like a crisscross. So here would be the next crisscross. So you're going to have to like angle it up. And you'll have to move the thread around a little bit. This is almost, it's kind of like right there. So you're going to have to be, you're going to have to slide the thread around. And I know this isn't going to be exact, but if this was like the final product that I'm doing, I'm going to try it. I know on my previous rod, I didn't really do this, that some of them came off crooked, but I really wish this would just stay in focus. So as you can see here, we're gonna have two sides where the line crosses. So this side, so we're making sure on this side, and then we're also making sure on this side, about right there. And keep going, then you'll get to your next cross. And you're gonna come up a little bit so that the center of the cross is like they're all in line. Here it's kind of out, but and the next one, make sure centered. And the next one, centered. 
Hold it down like that. And then that one. And there you can see it's kind of a big gap, which we could fix by redoing it. And then you'd come up to the top where we started. And then go around a couple times. So you could just leave it like that, or if you wanted to make it thicker, you would just come back down following the same, the first line, first piece of thread you went down, just right next to it. This tag end is really making this a pain. <laughs> so you just follow how you went down, and then you'll do the same thing, you'll follow it back up to make it thicker. So you can do this but just like now we're doing it with gold or so base if you want to add colors to it you can do that so you'd want to do to like kind of make it show up a little bit better um, it's a little bit harder to see when it's just one band so say you wanted gold and like blue so you do gold and then do two bands thick of the gold so you do up and down twice to make it two gold bands and then you'd tie it off and finish it just exactly like how you've been doing and then you'd go back and do the exact same thing but with blue you could, but to do that then you would probably it'd look good if you put the blue on each side of the gold so you just do the same thing except when you're going down go on one side of the gold and going back up do the same side to cover the second part and then when you go back down, go on the other side of the gold, so it kind of just like sandwiches in between. So yeah, that'd be twice, and then you go back up to make it two bands on the other side, so you'd come around. And then basically you just want to keep like kind of finishing it here. You go around a couple times just to make sure it doesn't get loose. And you start coming back up on the second one like that so as you can see it's getting thicker because you're adding another band to it which I think does look a little bit better so I'm gonna do probably something similar to this and I want to throw in the purple somehow and this light blue color so I gotta figure something out like that so we'll get back All right, I'm gonna try to do it quickly before hopefully <laughs> this tape holds on there but I'm gonna I guess I am gonna go with the gold first so as you can see the guide so what I'm trying to do it's not quite lined up correctly but we'll, we will fix it uh, I'm trying to get where the thread crosses over kind of here I gotta line them up better um, trying to line them up so that the top side kind of follows the guide on the bottom and then when I've rotated over you can see it's like that and then the other side where it crosses kind of lines up with the guide so it's like centered so definitely I gotta you can also push the thread down a little bit help line it up and whatnot but once you get that lined up then you just keep going back and forth however many times however thick you want it to look and then whatever colors you're going to add to it so all right so instead of aligning it a little bit better I kind of just finished it just to show what I was meaning. So this is what it looked like. So this is what it looked like with two bands on it. You can see each line is two bands. Because it just makes it look a little bit thicker and nicer. As you can see here is where you kind of finish it off. Or you just keep. Then at the end, once you're all finished, you'll just cover this with black thread so you won't be able to see it. And yeah, that's essentially what it looks like but I'm also gonna add the blue and other colors to it because like I said I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna kinda just do it <laughs> and then redo it once I have like a good idea in my head so we'll get to doing that and then I'm probably gonna add the blue and all you're gonna do is the same thing except you're just gonna put the blue directly next to the purple or uh, the gold and actually I'm thinking I wonder how it would look if I put in between the two bands one line of purple and then surround it or I, wonder, I could do that that might look good if I put the blue in between the purple the blue in between the gold 
and then put two bands of purple on the outside of the gold. That might look cool. I'll have to play around with it, let's see. Okay, I figured I'd show this part, hopefully this doesn't come off. And tape. So I'm going back, like I said, I'm gonna put the blue, I think, in between the gold. As you can see, I got my blue band right here. It's really hard to tell, I think because the light's a little bit yellow. But it might actually look better if I put two bands of blue, then you'll definitely be able to see it. But all I'm doing is the same thing, following the same pattern, except I'm going in between the gold and it just, the blue thread just snaps right into place. And then you just keep following it down. tough to see because it's like metallic on metallic but hopefully you can kind of tell the blue is going in between. It definitely probably would look better. So I guess looking back now, well I'm, I can do that once I start redo this, that I'll put the blue on first and then I'll surround it with gold and I'll surround both of those with the purple. But figure just show, there you can kind of see the blue in between. I think it was like if the dark blue would show up much better, but it's like light blue is kind of tough. But I'm just putting this on now just to figure out what kind of design will look cool to me. And then it just, you know, you barely even have to put that much pressure and it just falls in between the gold. So for this one, I'm just going to do once because when I do the actual, I'll do it twice because then the blue, the blue will show up a lot better. But yeah, same thing. And then you'll just do the same with the purple and put it on the outside. Okay, so finish it up and it's kind of hard to tell. It's definitely a lot easier to see out in the sunlight. But we got blue on the inside, two bands of blue, and two bands of gold on each side of the blue, and then three bands of purple on the outside of all of that. But now kind of thinking about it, I probably should have redid it and I know it's not lined up. I'm gonna mess with this one a little bit, try and shift it over a little bit, which you can do. You can like um, kind of push the thread around a little bit. But if you're doing it, line it up straight. To me, it, honestly, I don't, I don't even think about it after I finish making the rod. So it doesn't bother me. Um, one thing I was gonna say, uh, I probably should have did like kind of the reverse coloring with the purple on the inside instead of the blue, then the do purple, blue, then gold instead of blue, gold, and purple, because then that would kind of match up with this guy, like the, what I did on the guides of uh, purple on the middle, then blue, the outside, then gold on the outside. That might have matched it a little bit better, and actually it probably would have made the purple show a little bit more, but. I kind of do like how the purple doesn't really show up, that it's kind of darker. And it'll get a little bit darker once they put the epoxy on, but when it's in the sunlight, you can put it, you can see it fine. But I mean, it's whatever colors you're doing your, your rod with. So in this case, it's purple. So yeah, uh, here you can see I kind of covered it up where I'd tie off for the wrap like that. And you, pr you basically just take a bunch of black thread and just fill it up. Just like the same knot you're always doing. Um, doesn't really matter if it's straight or not. Once you put the epoxy on it, it'll kind of fill in the gaps. And then the only way you'll be able to see that it's a little bit uneven or whatever is if like you're holding in the sunlight and purposely looking to see that. Otherwise, it's not going to be really that noticeable. Um, and here I got to put black thread up on there. Same way to hide that. And then... We are ready for the epoxy. All right, so last step of building this rod. So you can see we got our rod spinner thing. It's, a, it's got like a little switch and it basically just spins the rod. And here we have yet to put the butt cap on, but it finally came, it finally came in the mail and it took like a month to, <laughs> I guess it was like that far backward or whatever, but yeah, eventually we'll put it on the back, but I wanted to do it like this because this is a little bit too thick to like force it in there and this is just like rubber, so I didn't want to rip that. 
So I just put, once again, rolled up a bunch of tape around the butt end of the blank, and that fits it pretty well. So we, uh, let's get started. All right, so hopefully my aquarium isn't making too loud of a noise, which I'm about to make aquarium update video after I'm done doing this. So we got ourselves our epoxy here. So now this is a different kind of epoxy where the other one was kind of like um, a cream, I guess it would be like, but this one's more liquid. You kind of see it's like moving around in the bottle, this one. Is more brown you can tell and yeah once again it's just part a part b which, which one this one's part b the hardener the red one part a the resin the blue one and i was reading directions a little bit and they're saying three milliliters with these cute little shots they have kind of not really in focus but whatever it's just a shot <laughs> So I guess we're gonna do three milliliters of it. And this is my last mixing cup thing. It looks like a cough medicine kind of uh, cup, which I need to order some more, because if I screw this up, this is my only chance, and it's probably gonna take a while to order them, <laughs> at least a week or something. So yeah, we got that. And the last thing is, this says it's like a rod building brush, but to me this looks like a regular Bob Ross like brush thing. So yeah, all we're gonna do with that is dip it in there and then, where is it, just here? Just gonna do it like that on there a little bit and then we are good to go. Yeah, before we get started with that, I just wanted to show real quick, I, on the other end towards the grip, I filled it with uh, black thread. So I did that on both ends to kind of cover it. Let's do this. So start with part A, the resin. So this will be the third time I've done this. First time was in my other previous rod, build, rod building video with the spinning fishing rod. Then I think I showed it. In a second video I made of how to repair a broken fishing rod guide, and this will be the third time. So, what I used to do when I was building rods, I would take it to tackle shop or anywhere that does any kind of rod stuff, and I would let them do it, the epoxy work for me. So I would just do, I think it was like 15 bucks or something. Whatever they charge, it's probably different wherever. And I just let them do all that for me. Kinda, you can see in the background maybe. Put about three milliliters. You know what, we'll, we'll do four. I feel like that's not enough. This does matter because on actually the rod I did before on the where I said I showed how to replace a guide I actually didn't mix the epoxy right and I don't know when I uploaded that video probably definitely several months by now maybe a year I don't know but uh that was it still has it's still sticky so it did not dry properly so that means it what I didn't get the mixture correct which it still holds, like I've caught fish on the rod and everything. Fish, is, fish using the rod, no problem. But it's uh, it's like sticky to touch. Okay, so we got, now this is the other one, so you can kind of see. It's three. And we'll do one mil. So I guess that's eight milliliters total. Using like these sh shots, it seems like, let's see, what size is a milliliter? So we're under 10, so maybe that is eight. Maybe we did it correctly. So you can kind of see the bottom is the clear part A, then part B, the darker on the top. And then, this is just gonna mix. And I think it says mix for like three minutes because it'll get bubbles in it. 
and you kind of want to mix it until the bubbles kind of come out of it but which means there is the possibility and slowly mix it there's a possibility of when you're putting it on it'll leave bubbles on the rod and a lot of the times it comes out and it just like rises to the surface and gets out but I think you can like kind of pop them a little if you have like a needle to kind of pop the bubble yeah I don't want to oh, I thought I was mixing this on camera but I mean it's just literally a mixing epoxy <laughs> Um, don't want to do it too fast because if you do then it'll start making air bubbles in it it's kind of, I don't know if it's showing there's a couple in there now but it'll raise the surface and get out yeah I can't wait to use this rod I think, what is it, today's Thursday I'm going to try and get out, well actually no I was going to say I'll try and get out on the weekend but I believe I believe this weekend it's supposed to get really cold. So that, I mean, Florida cold, like 50s, maybe 40s or something. That's cold here. But that means there's a cold front coming down. And that is most likely north, northeast winds. And that's literally the worst time to fish other than when there's a hurricane coming through in Florida. That the northeast wind clashes with the Gulf Stream moving north. So it just stacks waves up and not good but damn sailfish love that kind of stuff i don't know see if maybe if my buddy he has a lot bigger boat than i do 31 contender which if you're wondering i've had a lot of people ask about that boat uh it's usually my it's my friend's 31 contender and my boat's a 24 wellcraft his boat is much better suited for rough weather Rough water is a much nicer, enjoyable time. So, I don't know. We'll see, maybe. Because that'd be pretty cool if the first fish on this is, like, sailfish. But I know it's going to be a damn bonita. We're going to spend, like, all that money on goggle eye. And if first fish is on this, is going to be a bonita. Dumbass fish. But, yeah, who knows? Let's see. Maybe, maybe see if I can get... Just get out on the boat real quick. See if there's some snook laying around. So this is definitely probably more than three minutes. So let's hope. So now to epoxy. Okay, so hopefully this stays somewhat in focus, but literally what I'm doing is I'm gonna dip this brush into the epoxy and just put it on. So the whole point of this rod spinning around in circles you can kind of see right there is so the epoxy doesn't really build up on one side and just leave like a big drip mark when it dries so if it's too much it just rolls it'll keep rolling round and round and round she goes and then once it gets to a certain point it'll drop off so this is probably like I always leave it on here for almost, probably a day. Like you'll start, you could t tell like when it'll start like hardening a little bit. It'll it'll look like it's kind of hard, but it'll still be um, what's it like moldable would be the word. It's not wet, but it'll like. I mean, it's easy. You'll see. You'll know what I mean. So to do on the edges, kind of want to make it, actually, no, I'm not, so for this, I've seen other people where, I think my friend tried it, I have never done it, so this is going to be the first time trying it, I'm going to actually cover the blank with epoxy. So here you want to make sure that the epoxy is getting under the guide. Also, this part you don't want to put too much because then it could drip onto the guide. So you don't want to go too ham. I have a feeling I'm going to come up short. I should have mixed more epoxy. This is kind of 
difficult to get it in between while the guide's spinning. Yeah, you can kind of see over here on the right side, it's evening it out. As it spins, as the world turns. Has anyone else been fishing at all? Like, I just literally have not been fishing. Oh, that's a waste. Make sure it's underneath that. Then that's where you get the rust in whenever fresh salt water, I mean salt water especially, can get under there. Yeah, I'm going to have to find some other kind of cup. I don't know if I could just go to like Walgreens or something and buy the medicine that's literally what this cup looks like i mean i, I want to kind of say i could use a solo cup because i have some but i don't know if like the solo cup's white i don't know if the epoxy would like absorb the white i don't know plastic i feel like there's some kind of chemical thing going on there so yeah it's a quick one hopefully that was in focus i did not pay attention to that at all but i'll try and show another guide okay so we're finished on that it's not quite in focus whatever i think because now the epoxy on it the shininess is kind of making it difficult to focus but yeah that's all you do we're going to do the exact same thing for every single other guide now so we'll be back okay so next guide hopefully my arm's in the light but this is kind of difficult to show. So I think I'm just going to do the guides to make sure these are done. And then I'll go back if I have enough. And even once it dries, we can go back and redo the, the blank. So with the epoxy stuff, it's always much easier to mix a lot more than you need. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't want to like waste it, but I tend to see more often than not when I'm mixing epoxy that mixing more than I needed would be the way to go. Oops. Okay. And even for the butt wrap end of the rod, same exact thing. I feel like there's a part right on the middle inside. Okay. Yeah. Try and make this even on the outside. I think we're good. I think we are good. 
So yeah, come back once this is dry. All right, so we are now finished. Kind of hard to see because when after you put the epoxy on, a lot of the colors turn out darker. Like that looks black, but it's the purple on the guide. Yeah, but once you're out in the sunlight, it'll show up much brighter. All the colors, the purple, the blue, the gold. And yeah, everything turned out decently well. A couple of, actually, some things didn't go correct, which I'm kind of happy. So then I can show you what. Here, hopefully you can kind of see on the gold, there's like a piece sticking out right here. And if you feel it, it's actually sharp, especially now after putting the epoxy on it. That's from when uh, cutting it, cutting the thread on to end the band. It, uh, I didn't cut it close enough and it didn't snap under. So then now that's kind of poking out. I mean, to me, I don't really care. Up here you can kind of see probably, you can probably see it a little bit easier right there on the purple. Like here it's sharp. There's some blue on the gold, it's sharp. But uh, that's what happens if you don't do that correctly. So when you're doing it, do that part correctly. But uh, other than that, I think the only other thing that went wrong, besides not having enough epoxy, that I'm gonna have to go over it a second time because some parts here, can't really tell. Um, I need more epoxy on it that you can kind of feel the thread bump. So I'm gonna have to go over this all once, another time with epoxy and then one part that did it must have happened after it, it started drying it's kind of hard to tell it's easy to see in real life you can see like right around here where it's like white those are bubbles that are trapped in the epoxy so i guess the thread kind of released some air and that got trapped in bubbles in the epoxy so what i'm going to do to fix that is uh, i'm going to go over this with black thread and then just epoxy over that again. So hopefully that'll fix that and make that look a little bit nicer. And other than that, yeah. Real looks good. The black with purple. Blue line matches up with the blue on the thread and I am happy with it. The only other thing left to do would be to put the butt cap on and all you do is just like when you put the real seat on, you just put some epoxy on the blank in there and you don't have to do a ton because this doesn't take that much pressure for it and you just slip it on so finish rod that's how you build a rod hopefully it's... and if I left some things out that you're wondering about I will also link to the first rod I built and you can watch that one also and get some different um, I guess tips on what we're building than this video so the two videos together should help you do it fairly easily. So as always, hopefully you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching.